Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. In today's video, I want to show you how to properly set up and stage your artwork and try to make everything a little bit easier to work through your composition and get to a you know relatively likable scene. So as you see here, I'm working on a uh, fan art piece of Superman versus Batman or Batman versus Superman, however you like to say that. And uh, you know, at first I, I kind of struggled through getting the composition right on this one, uh, trying to get to something acceptable, and I ultimately came up with this. Now, not saying this is the greatest uh, use of composition and direction, but I want to explain the process, and it's obviously not completely done yet, uh, but I figured it was a good midway point to kind of explain what got me to here. And from this level, I just basically go through and start adding finished uh, pencils like this where I tighten up the lines and things like that. So essentially the way that I work and get to that level is I start off very basic, so I'll get rid of all these layers here, and I start off ultimately with something like this right here, which is the thumbnail stage. Uh, and I even sometimes work these out on my phone or tablet uh, and then bring them to my workstation and refine them. But essentially this can be done on anything. This can be done on notebook paper, uh, a thumbnail like this should only take you just a few seconds, uh, barely a minute, and you know, just all you're trying to get down is the feel for the piece. And uh, a lot of times, I can tell just in this beginning, very ugly stage, whether or not it's going to work. Uh, sometimes I can't. Sometimes I get por uh, partially the way into the drawing and then realize uh, this isn't where I thought it was going to go. Uh, but this, the beauty of working in stages like this is that it will forego you wasting a lot of time uh, on pieces that may not excel. Um, so, and you'll, you over time, you'll get better at your quick read, which will be your very loose thumbnail stage, and you'll be able to see into the picture a bit more and go, yeah, I think I could make this into something cool, or this shot works, this shot doesn't. Uh, so you should rough through your entire book, and I'm guilty of this, wanting to start detailing certain parts of uh, my illustration too early on. So what you have to do is just get used to looking at these and going, yeah, that's going to work. I'll keep that. I'll get rid of this one, uh, put the big fat X on it, and move on to the next one. And, uh, and again, this will save you a tremendous amount of time. Now from here, uh, and, and you can do this with every aspect. You can do the thumbnails to the background. Uh, like even this, I don't know if I'm going to keep this background, but one of the things that I that I did like about uh, sketching out this quick layout to the background is that this one point perspective gives me some directional lines towards the action. Now, I don't know if I'm going to go with this because there's another way to do this as well and I'll show you this. So this is going to be a mix of me kind of talking to you a little bit about composition effects and also how I stage the work to uh, get to the refinement level. So the reason why I picked a one-point perspective and the reason why I think you see a lot of one-point perspective in comics is because they give you these nice directional lines. So I can point all the detail that you might see, even though their capes are blocking a lot of it from this kind of close-up uh, shot. What little bit you will see will point right to the action, which, you know, the focal point's right about there. So that's where one-point perspectives are really helpful. Um, especially if you're more of a beginning artist and you're still trying to figure out this type of stuff, uh, I, I would say really focus on your one-point perspectives and then let the two-point, three-point uh, naturally kind of fill into your work. Uh, don't start, I, I think too many artists want to go right for the, the tough stuff and, and really advanced stuff, and then they think, well, I'll just you know, get that out of the way and then everything else will be easier, which seems like it would make sense, but it actually confuses you more than anything, I think. So... Um, so that's where one point perspectives can be very helpful. Now, another way to do that is uh, the other thing that I thought about, you know, I've got like this, um, let me pick a, a brighter, easier to see color here. Um, I've got this bright, you know, or uh, this very in focus, up close uh, piece of wall, you know, right there and one right here. Uh, I do that intentionally to stage the work, to give a little bit more depth to the scene. Uh, if it's just the characters here, it can become very flat very quickly. So something really up close to camera can uh, kind of stage it. And then what you end up doing is you can have this effect that you got your, your items up here, your characters here, obviously. 
draw a quick line around it just to illustrate the point. So, you know, you've got your characters, which in essence right here would be your stage two, we'll say, or your second layer level of depth. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then your third, and lastly, would be the background effect, whether it be that one point perspective of buildings fading off into the distance, uh, or you could really just simply say, okay, they're, they're a little bit tighter into the, the, the chaos and rubble that you're seeing. So you can have a lot of loose little detail background, you know, stuff, filler uh, back here. But then you could have, like, say, a larger brick wall. And I think I might go with this because, honestly, I think it'll, it'll still give me my directional lines that I wanted for uh, intensity and perspective. So I could have, like, this brick wall, you know... And again, I just rough this stuff out in the beginning just to see if it'll work. So I don't sit there and, you know, detail one break and move on to the next because for the sake that I might get through it and go, oh, this, this isn't what I thought it would, you know, look like or whatever. So you could do like a, a another broken brick wall kind of on an angle so you see some of that cool little side broken brick stuff. And, you know, but you got your directional lines that point into the action. And you don't want to make it too obvious, but enough of that in your, your scene um, you know, and it keep, you know, I like I even added this little cloud of smoke going through them. Even though it's a bit of a deterring shape in the middle, I think it adds a cool little uh, contrast or a yin and yang kind of effect to the fight scene. Um, so that's, you know, and I, I think smoke's just cool to draw. So, you know, so I try to throw that in, you know, here and there. Uh, but not as a distraction from the angles that I'm telling you. Just more of an, uh, I guess, an organic shape, and it adds to the effect, you know, gives it some, uh, you know, effect that they're fighting and there's smoke rolling up from the debris and stuff like that. So those are some compositional things to think about, you know, even early on when constructing the scene. And sometimes, you know, you just make changes. Like I said, I, I wanted to go with the uh, city perspective, but I'm, I'm thinking it might be a little bit almost more distracting in a sense where this can keep you closer into the uh, element of the fight scene and still give me some of the directional lines. And I don't know if I'll do the wall exactly like this. Um, now one last thing I'll touch on with the the uh, kind of a mix with the compositional and working in a program like Sketchbook Pro. Keep in mind too that you can create layers, or actually let me just delete this one, and you can create layers, uh, say I was doing that brick wall effect, uh, this is kind of just a handy feature. You can, say, create your, I don't know, chiseled wall, broken up or whatever. Again, just scratching this in really quickly. You know, maybe the bricks are huge on this, like it's a block wall. So whatever, something like that. So you get this really rough effect. And, and by doing it on a separate layer, you can just use this distortion effect here. And you can kind of play around with your composition and your layout a bit, you know, easier. And see, you know, re really where you want that. You know, it's um, they don't have to all be a, a perfect perspective, especially because this would be like debris, so it could be all over the place. So, anyways, I just want to show you that distortion effect comes in really handy for, again, basic compositional layouts. Okay, so there's our there's our thumbnails, and then um, you know from there, and all if you notice, I label these from like thumbnail to rough to details to foreground background. So that, again, that's staging the work, uh, making it easier. You know, as long as I can keep track of all these layers, it makes it easier for me to um, you know kind of get in here and mess around. So I can get rid of those ones, and I can um, generally what I'll do is I'll turn the opacity down, and then I'll go to like uh, Superman rough lines. And so I start refining them a, a bit more. Um, and then where's Batman rough lines right here. So this was like the next stage. Um, and, and there was a little bit of soft erasing. So forgive me for that because there was a blocking in stage. Uh, and just to show you real quick what that is so you got an idea. Is basically where I take it from this stage here. And I'll add another layer. Because like I said I did soft erase some of that down. So you're not getting to see the blocking in stage. But all that is. It's so where I get in here and I just really rough, I take it to a mannequin, a more refined mannequin. And you have to kind of fight yourself, or at least I do, from wanting to go right to detail here. So what you're doing is giving yourself nice construction lines for, you know, like here, direction of the face, positioning of, 
you know, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and it, it's just very loose, but it's tighter than what I had before. I do like the side of the head, the front of the head, like this. I just do a couple, like, circles and ovals to kind of give me the planes of the, uh, the head, kind of. Um, chest shape, you know, just a little bit more refined than I already had. And this, this by any means, or by no means is uh, a finished product type thing. It's just another level or staging of the work to get me to uh, a comfort zone so I can start getting in there and penciling and knowing if this uh, this is going to work out for me or not. So, you know, and you can make adjustments uh, more quickly and on the fly. I talk about this a lot on my channel and I, I get a lot of responses where people are like, oh, I really can't stand doing that. I like just going right to drawing my characters. And I get that. I mean, there's some shots I do that as well, and, and it definitely uh, is a little less boring maybe. I don't know. I, I don't, really don't mind doing this. But but the thing is, is that I think the main purpose of this is it's a time saver, uh, and it's, it allows you to, uh, to uh, what's the way to explain it, to process your work more um, effectively. You know, so you're... you're it basically breaking down the process in which you create this stuff so that you can be more uh, consistent with your work, produce on a schedule, you know, look at a certain shot, panel, whatever, and and be able to kind of uh, deduce, deduce, deduct, um, what, how long that's going to take you, you know, and if you can even accomplish that in the time frame that you have to. So all those things go into working in this fashion, I, I believe, anyways, and I'm no you know, big pro or anything with comics. Um, uh, like I say, a lot of my channel here, I'm, I'm more of a storyboard artist that uh, enjoys doing comics. But um, I, I have to do the same kind of uh, process with my storyboards where I break things down uh, in, you know, in bite-sized chunks so that I can complete the project. Where, you know, the deadlines there are even um, more intense than, uh, than comics. So... Uh, but comics have like you know just a tremendous amount of detail. That's why you see a lot of artists usually group up to uh, produce these books. So that that's about how I'd rough out the character there. And, you know, and there's lots of videos on my channel here to explain how I even do this process right there. But that's essentially the in-between stage that I wanted to show you because you know that's that's the next stage to then to this where. Um, I start to refine it and then, uh, oh, and one other thing to keep in mind as I'm refining it to here, uh, I also have been doing this a lot where I drop in a set of shadows like this. <laughs> Sorry, they look really bad without the line work. But what I do is I just basically, let me find the Superman and Batman roughs. Where are you? And you can also set these in groups together so it's a little easier to discern. Okay, so essentially, and I guess I'll do the background and foreground details as well so you can see exactly what I was doing. So I got to a level where I was penciling some pretty rough lines, but, you know, starting to refine some of my shadows. And, you know, you see it's still very scratchy and scribbly, and I'm still working through the process. Um, but then as I get to a certain level, after I've adjust all my proportions, and I do that, just so you know, by selecting certain things and moving them around. So I'll select the hand like this, I'll move it forward, I'll add some to the wrist, I'll tilt it, see if it looks better with a tilt. All those things I do as I'm going from that uh, rough blocky stage I just showed you to this right here. So if you see any differences, that's the main you know reasoning for that as well. Uh, along with a little bit of soft erasing and redrawing. Now, the other thing that I do that I've been doing more of is I drop in this shadow layer and all that's all that is really is when I'm in that rough stage and I'm still trying to kind of refine the artwork uh, and see a little bit further into the piece, I'll just add a new layer. I'll take like this uh, hard pencil tool. I'll set it to a, a light gray somewhere in here. And I'll just get in there and I'll start blocking in. And I can either set this to multiply or drop it behind the line work, whatever. But I'll, I'll, I'll get in there and I'll quickly just throw in some, some shadows. And the reason being is I'm a, I'm a bit skeptical or hesitant to add nice heavy shadows to my work. And I like shadows. Uh, um, they're important and they really propel the uh, artwork off the page. So this helps me to kind of feel out the process 
and see where those shadows would look good and how much of that I want. Like I'm obviously gonna have a lot heavier shadows on, uh, on Batman here. Uh, he's always, you know, he's the Dark Knight, so obviously he's gonna have more uh, shadows. Uh, if you notice, that's why I pretty much I'm gonna block in his entire cape with a few small light sources on there, uh, where Superman's will be just a little bit less in shadow. So just just little things like that. But this process for just blocking the shadow helps me to look at it kind of uh, from a distance or as a whole really quickly and go, yeah, I think that'll look good. Let's let's take that to the next level before just start pe uh, penciling in and uh, maybe getting lost in the process. So I really recommend doing that. It's helped me a lot with my shadows. And like I said, I'm more the type of artist that had to fight myself and and add enough shadows. And I, I don't know that I add enough now. I, I think I still have, uh, I'm a little light handed on that, but this process has definitely helped me with that. So I wanted to share that. And it's real easy to do. It's quick. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to be clean. It can be messy. And just think of it like you're, you're working on traditional and you, you grabbed a big fat Prismacolor marker and just started blocking in some tone. Uh, it's kind of the same effect. All right, so then once I get it to this process, this is the fun part for me anyways, um, is where I drop like a, a layer. Uh, I fill it, the entire layer, if you said it's a blue square, I filled that entirely and I turn it to screen mode right here. So it only colors the line work of anything that's above. So if I drop it way back here, you see it'll only affect things that are beneath it. Uh, and then from there, I just get in with another layer and this is where I kind of zoom in and start uh, tightening up all the line work and adding some uh, cross hatching and things like that and I just basically you know just have fun with it um, I don't have to think about it as much now because um, I've got all that preliminary work out of the way that's again helped me to you know stage it and get to a process where now I can just refine my lines and um, not you know not worry so much I can just get in here and clean it up and add some effects. I still make small incremental changes to the work even at this stage um, but I've got a lot better idea of what's going on in the picture for me to do that. So I think it gives me a better uh, level of finish um, at the end here. So that's that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to uh, show you and address with this video. Uh, keep in mind that as soon as this one's completely done, which uh, should be in the next few days, uh, depending on my workload, um, this will actually be uh, a time lapse. And you know, let me know if you'd like me to narrate over the process as I time lapse it or something like that. I would show it in real time, but this this is going to be a really lengthy one, so that just wouldn't make sense on the channel here. But um, but as always, I thank you for tuning in and watching this video. I hope it's been helpful to you. Let me know in the comments section below what you like, what you didn't. If I missed anything, I'd be happy to address that for you. And as always, thank you for tuning in and watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.